The Light Bulb Cartel. There are three main ways corporations stimulate the demand for their products, which ensure sustainable factory commitments and growth into the future. Design, pricing and built-in obsolescence, all used to gain market share and seduce consumers into buying things they don't need to impress people they don't know with money they don't have to prop up an artificially created debt-based monetary system that creates money out of thin air, pushing more debt onto the shoulders of each new generation. Planned obsolescence is a subtle, secret mechanism at the heart of the modern consumer society. In the early part of the 20th century, manufacturers took great pride in their products, offering goods which would last, even outliving the consumers who purchased them. The only drawback was once most consumers had made the first purchase, they had no reason to purchase again. After the initial brand release, the factories became idle as demand dropped. At the turn of the last century, light bulbs were being produced which could last 5,000 hours or more. Every year, a fire station in Livermore, California celebrates the birthday of one of its resident light bulbs. Invented by Adolphe Chalet, the bulb has been burning continuously since 1901, a design certainly made to last. Edison's first commercial bulb went on sale lasting on average 1,500 hours. By the mid-1920s, light bulbs were being made to last a good 2,500 hours. In the winter of 1924, the world's bulb manufacturers came together to form a cartel. Each member had strict guidelines to produce inferior bulbs, lasting no more than 1,000 hours. Any member found producing superior bulbs would incur a fine. By the 1940s, the new standard became 1,000 hours, effectively conning the consumer, creating unnecessary demand for light bulbs. Planned obsolescence was born. Many inventors have filed patents for bulbs which purport to last a staggering 100,000 hours, but the power of the corporate cartels made sure these products would never reach the marketplace. Today, most products are designed with obsolescence in mind, targeting a price range where the consumers expect only a limited life's usage. This keeps the factories busy, full of people, devoting their precious lives on churning out garbage products that devour natural resources which eventually end up in the backyard of some third world country destined to become one of many global rubbish dumps. During the middle of the last century, the USSR was governed differently. Centrally planned by the state, the government stipulated that all white goods, fridges and washing machines should last a minimum of 25 years. It doesn't take much effort to produce good products. The modern Western corporate manufacturing system has become psychopathic, 
yet people participate en masse, underpinning its existence and devoting their life's purpose to promoting this expansion. Other mechanisms at the corporation's disposal are designed to seduce the minds of the consumer, stimulating their desire to want more and to want the latest. This is achieved through new fashions and escalating specifications. Even though planned obsolescence may be attached to a product, it is in the interest of the manufacturing corporation to tempt the consumer into parting with their existing functional goods and money in exchange for the latest brand or design. All the large corporations now interlock to form a powerful array of control and influence, tweaking policy throughout the system, enhancing their agenda and maximizing profits. With subtle techniques of hypnotic suggestion, aided by mainstream media, advertising and through perverted social expectations, they stimulate the consumer's inferiority complex, installed into them by their corporate upbringing. This is a perpetual cycle. There is always a new model or a new brand to pursue. The illusion of freedom and happiness through unlimited consumption has been set in the focal and subconscious minds of the citizens over generations, creating nations of shallow, materialistic, unsatisfied debt slaves obsessed without purchasing their friends and neighbors with the latest tat. From September the 1st, 2012, a push was made by many governments to ban the sale of the old-style incandescent light bulbs in favor of what they called energy-efficient lighting or eco-friendly. The definition of eco-friendly is not harmful to the environment. These governments argue that the new light bulbs will dramatically reduce energy bills and greenhouse gas emissions, which they say is linked to man-made global warming. The bulbs are purported to last up to 10 times longer than their traditional counterpart. This, of course, is only because all incandescent bulbs were made to break by the bulb cartels back in the 1920s. So this reason alone cannot be used as a satisfactory excuse for the change. The amount of energy required to produce these new bulbs during the manufacturing process is vastly greater than the traditional incandescent bulb with over 30 separate electronic components and a glass tube that contains a cocktail of toxic carcinogenic chemicals including mercury. Some of these toxins are even emitted during normal use. How they can say this is eco-friendly is pure fantasy. It must be corporate governmental doublespeak for an agenda they are keeping to themselves. Although there is a saving on the running costs, with less than half the required power consumption, some people have reported serious health problems which they believe to be caused by these compact fluorescent lights. If one of these toxic bulbs breaks in your home, the official recommendation by the Federal Environment Agency is to evacuate your home for at least 15 minutes, to leave all the windows open and to turn off any heating. It is estimated that only 10% 
of these CFL bulbs are disposed of in the proper recommended fashion, leaving the other 90% to pollute and toxify waste dumps and other areas of the environment in which they end up. Certainly not eco-friendly to many people. The CFL light bulb fiasco is another example of corporations infiltrating policy makers to legislate in favour of corporate interests. It is no surprise that the light bulb cartel, 80 years after it was created, positioned themselves amongst the gears of the European Union, gaining a tactical advantage and promoting their monopoly throughout Europe. In a rush to push forward this new legislation, it has been suggested that the European Commission failed to carry out proper trials and tests prior to the new rules becoming law. The lack of tests ensuring the safety of these new bulbs exposed the real balance of power throughout this new European community, putting the interests of the corporations before that of its citizens.